If you'd like to know some of the basics of why certain oil viscosities are recommended for certain engines, then keep watching this video because I go through the basics here. Hello, welcome to the Repair Specialist channel and now I'm going to go through, in terms of viscosity, the very basics of why certain oils are prescribed to certain engines. And there is much more to it than this, many other factors, so this is just the basics. First we've got to understand how these oils work as the engine's working. So as an example then, let's say that this engine runs on 5W30. That's the manufacturer's recommendations. And breaking down that code, first of all we've got the 5W, that's the first part of the code. Then we've got the 30, that's the second part. Let's start here at the 5W. When we first started the engine and the engine's cold, the oil will be cold. And so the 5 means that it's got a viscosity of 5, so it's very thin and that means it'll get up to all of these areas and round to the engine parts as quick as possible but the important thing to remember is this is when the oil is cold so let's have a look at the other figure the 30 now in the presence of heat so when the engine's warm the oil actually transforms and acts like a 30 grade oil so that a 30 grade oil can stand the heat better it actually changes its composition to act the way a 30 grade oil would do in the heat rather than a 5 grade oil would do because a 5 grade oil when it's hot would be way too thin so that's why it acts like a hot 30. So basically this oil takes the consistency of 5 in the cold and then it takes on the consistency that a 30 would take on when the 30 is hot. And I really want to emphasize this point because I do get comments saying it's absolute nonsense that an oil can be 5 viscosity when it's cold and then turn to 30 viscosity when it's hot because oil always gets thinner when it's hotter. And that's not what I mean whatsoever. What I'm trying to say is in the cold it acts like a 5 so it has the consistency of a 5 but then it doesn't take on the consistency of a 30 viscosity when the 30 viscosity is cold it doesn't take on that thickness it actually takes on the thinner viscosity that the 30 would become in the heat so it's still thin but it takes on the consistency of a hot 30 rather than a hot 5 and that's my point. So there's never a consistency of a cold 30 because that would be way too thick and there's never a consistency of a hot 5 because that would be way too thin for the engine. So let's imagine then this is the correct oil for this engine for the correct climate and all is well. So knowing that this engine now runs on 5W30 oil, let's have a look what would happen if we put the wrong oil in. And we'll take two examples here, both ending in 30, but the beginning figure there will take a 0W30 and then we'll see what happens with a 10W30. So first of all, let's start with the 0W30 and it's the 0W we're looking in at here because the 30 is the same. So we've just started the engine now from a cold start and let's take a look what's happened. That oil was that bit thinner than even the 5. So because it's a 0, it's got to them areas that quick that it's actually lubricated those areas quicker. Now please know that I'm not suggesting that you replace your 5W30 with 0W30. I'm merely saying that I have swapped these oils around in the past in this way and I haven't yet had a problem. But then again, I've not done this long term. But I do know some people that say they have done it long term and there's no issues. But because I haven't done it, I can't tell you from my own personal experience that it's okay to do so. All I'm trying to explain is that when we've got a thinner viscosity of oil here, it's going to get to those areas much quicker. And in line with what we've already been through about the second number, the 30, we already now know that using an oil with 0W at the start wouldn't be a detriment to the engine when the engine gets hot because it would behave the same as a 5W30. Okay, so that explains what a number lower than the 5W would do with the same 30. So let's have a look what a higher number than the 5W would do. We'll look here at 10W30. And remember, we said that this first number relates to how the oil performs when the engine is cold and when the oil is cold. So of course, that means that when this oil's cold, it has a viscosity rating of 10. And so without going into too much detail, that means that this oil at this temperature is a lot thicker than the 5W and a whole lot thicker than the 0W. So from a cold start then, when we first start the engine and everything's cold, we can see now it's going to take a lot longer for all of that oil to get up through all of them oil ways, through the pump there and up to those little oil channels where it needs to go to lubricate the engine. 
So needless to say here, this could have a detrimental effect on the engine without the sufficient lubrication quick enough to get up there and prevent any damage. So that's relating to the problems when cold with this oil. So let's have a look what would happen if we got it to work in temperature. Well, of course, when we get to work in temperature, we've got the heat, we've got the warmth there. It acts like a 30 again. So at this temperature, it's actually acting like the same as the other two. So what I'm saying is if the engine could get to this temperature without having any damage from cold, then it wouldn't have any further damage when hot because it's just acting normally. Anyone who lives in a very northern cold environment where it's sub-zero temperatures most of the time, generally manufacturer specifications will dictate that that first code there, so it's something like 0W if it's really, really cold because we want to get that oil up to those areas as quick as we possibly can in that very cold climate because we know oil thickens as it gets cold. Okay, so we've looked at what happens if the first number is below or above recommendations. Now let's have a look what happens if the last number is above or below recommendations. So I'll just pluck out a couple of examples again to make a point. And we've got a 5W20 here and we've got a 5W50. So first of all, let's see what happens when the engine's cold. All of these oils, in fact, are performing as good as each other because they've all got a viscosity of 5 at this cold temperature. So let's have a look now what happens when the engine is warm. So when it's up to working temperature, because this is the viscosity of these oils when it's hot. We're going to use a picture now looking from this angle and then we imagine a cross-sectional view. So imagine we've cut the crankshaft in half with the big end bearing on there. And just to clarify, this part here is the con rod that's there and we've got the actual crankshaft journal going through there. And the main area we want to focus in at now is that spacing between the two. Of course, this spacing here wouldn't be this large in reality. There would be a spacing there, but it would be more in the thousandth of an inch range. So I'm just making a point here with making it this large so I can show the oils going through better. The gap between these two are different between manufacturers and between different types of engines. That's why we need different types of oils. So the gap might be wider on some and less wide on others and that would depend on how thick or thin the oil should be. So always listen to manufacturers recommendations. They know what's best for the engines that they've made. Okay let's move on and look how these oils perform on this particular crankshaft bearing then. And first of all we'll start Start with the correct oil so the 5w30 which is the right one for this engine let's say let's imagine this engine's been running for a while and it's nice and hot at working temperature and because we're now working in the heat it's the 30 figure that comes into play with the oil and so now as this oil has took on the viscosity of a hot SAE 30 you can see there it fills this gap nicely because when the engine's running that main journal in the center is turning inside the big end bearing area of the conrod and so this 30 viscosity oil actually keeps these metals apart and stops any metal transfer and any welding together and it drops out of there and falls back down into the sump at a good rate and so its viscosity in this state isn't too thick or too thin and therefore it isn't staying between those components for too long as a sticky substance causing drag and at the same time it's not too thin that it's falling out of that area too quickly not providing a vital film of oil between those two components to prevent them from wearing on each other. So let's move on then and have a look now at a 5W20 in this particular engine. We're at working temperature. So if we have a look here, no problem. We've got the oil inside the crank journal keeping those metals apart at the moment. But remember at working temperature, this is giving a viscosity thickness of a hot SAE20, which of course will be thinner than the hot SAE30. And it's going to drop out of that main journal more down into the sump. Those two metal component parts can squish together that bit more, pushing the oil away and contact each other, producing wear. Okay, so let's have a look now at the 5W50. So this is the higher viscosity when hot. So again, there's no problem getting the oil into the crankshaft journals because when the engine was started off from cold, it was acting like a thin 5. So it got in between those areas, no problem. The trouble is now, of course, we're at working temperature and the oil has now took on the viscosity that an SAE50 does when it's hot rather than an SAE30 does when it's hot. And it's now acting like a thicker oil than what the recommendation is for this particular clearance between these two metals. It's actually acting as a drag onto those metals. So the fluid is too thick for efficient movement. 
in order for optimum speed of the engine. So this of course will reduce the engine's efficiency and also remember that when we're up at high temperature we really need all of that oil to get to where it needs to get and needs to get there very quickly because the engine's now running at a higher pace. So I hope I've explained things there well enough and please take a look down in the description below where you'll find a link to my website for some free downloads. I've designed these to help with diagnostics, troubleshooting and repairs of certain two-stroke engines, mainly chainsaws. And I shall be continually adding new downloads here, so please keep your eye on this side of the site, so you can always be up to date with what's new on there, and to continually see if there's any downloads of particular value to you. The best of it is that they're printable, so you can take them in the workshop with you, and study them at your own time, whilst you're working on your machine. There are some paid downloads, but most of them are, and will remain free. And in the meantime, I'll be back soon. Thank you for watching.